and I am about to take a ADI part one test, the question part. So a hundred questions. So I've been an ADI for quite a few years, tiny odd, I think. Uh, like to practice me part one every now and then. But I thought I'd record it. I've done this a few times in the past, just going through my thought process. So you will see if I get it right or wrong, which is all good. It's like a tightrope walker. walker. A physically disabled driver passes their driving test in a specially adapted vehicle. How will their driving license be restricted? Right, so we've either got, they have no restrictions on the type of vehicle they drive. They'd be only allowed to drive a vehicle with an automatic transmission. They be restricted to vehicles fitted with the adaptions. They'll have to keep within certain speed criteria. Okay, so let's take some of these out. Um, speed criteria for f a certain speed for three, three years is a big no-no, I think. They'll have no restrictions on their license, the vehicles they can drive right here. Well, if we go back here, a physically disabled driver passes their driving test in a specially, so this is a bit here, specially adapted vehicle. How will their license be restricted? Um, it, it doesn't say it's automatic. I guess it could be. But I'm I'm gonna go for they'll have to they'll be restricted to vehicle fitted with the suitable adaption. So let's go. Okay. Number two. What is the minimum distance from which an examiner will ask a driving test can, candidate to read a modern style number plate? Well, you're gonna know or not. So it is twenty meters, twenty two. 18, 25, or 20.5, so 20 is the nearest. So we'll go for that. Um, driving at night, what does it mean if you see a pedestrian wearing reflective clothing and carrying a red light? Oh, this one, eh? A red light, you normally see at the back of cars. So I would say it's the back of something. Um, so you're approaching an organized walk, you're approaching roadworks, roadworks of amber, isn't it flashy? You're approaching slow moving vehicle. You're approaching an incident or black spot. I'm going to go for this organized walk. There you go. Okay. What must you have when renewing your vehicle tax? Okay. So handbook. They're not interested in that. Valid. Your vehicle insurance. Possible. Valid driving license. Well, it might not be your car. You might be buying it for someone. The vehicle service record, they're not interested in that. It's going to be this or it's insurance. How can you modify your driving to help the environment? Okay, so they always play little games here, but use your car mainly for short journeys. People think, oh, just short journeys is better for the environment, but no. Look for a look and plan further ahead. That's a good possibility. Brake later than normal. You never want to brake later because it means you might have been on the gas and um you know been wasting fuel or electricity accelerate briskly through the gears mm, no nah, it's got to be looked further ahead isn't it planning always planning okay you're about to reverse into a side road what should you do if you see a pedestrian who wants to cross behind you wave to the pedestrian to cross well, that's possible isn't it wave to the pedestrian to stop give way to the pedestrian reverse before the pedestrian starts to cross so fourth one no um wave the pedestrian to cross normally a no wave to the pedestrian to stop no so i'm going to go give way give way sort of covers the whole whole thing okay so what advice should you give someone who intends to drive a left hand drive vehicle in the uk so what advice would you give someone who intends to drive oh, a left-hand drive vehicle in the UK? Okay, so keep well to your left lane. Use hand signals when turning. Make full use of your mirrors. Give signals earlier. God, that's awkward. So not hand signals. Make full use of mirrors. If someone who intends to drive a left-hand vehicle in the UK, well, we drive. Um, so, oh, 
I don't think they had this one when I, I'm trying to think right yeah let me just get this straight in my head <sighs> keep well to the left so we've got the left hand vehicle so I'm going down the road but I'm not in that one keep well to the left of your lane it's either that one or make you fool yourself I'm going to go through mirrors you know but we'll see. Could be my first one wrong. Potentially, I think. Got that one wrong. We'll have to go back to that at the end, won't we? What type of injury can be prevented by correctly adjusted head restraint? Well, head restraint's there to stop whiplash. So there you go, whiplash industry. Um, what advice should you give to your pupil about moving off in snow and ice? We don't want to over rev, so use low gears. So a low gear is like third, fourth. Um, spin low gears and spin the wheels to clear the snow. Hmm, not sure about that. Use the lowest gear you can, accelerate quickly. So lowest would be like first, nope. Use the highest gear you can, gentle acceleration, that's good. Use the highest gear to keep the engine revs high. So use the highest gear with gentle acceleration. I'm always going to go gentle acceleration. You don't want to be over the top there. There you go. What should you do if you have to treat someone for shock? Well, give them something to drink. Nope. Walk them around, calm them down. Nope, they could be hurt. <coughs> Call them down as soon as possible. Reassure them. So always reassure them. Reassuring is the way. Okay, so at an incident, a casualty has stopped breathing. What should you do to help them? Okay, so raise their legs, circulation, nope. So that circulation is C after the breathing. Try to give them something to drink, nope. Ensure their airways are clear and kept open, that's a possibility. Keep their head tilted forward as far as possible. No, if you forward, then you are closing the airways, you would go back. So it's got to be ensure that airways are kept open. Surely, that's why. Okay, why should you keep well back before overtaking a large vehicle? Well, the nearer you get, the less v the less view you get of the road ahead, I'm thinking. So to enable you to overtake quickly on blind beds, nope. To get the best view of the road ahead, that's a possibility, number two. Uh, to leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back, nope. To offer the other driver a safe gap if they want to overtake you. Mm, I think that one. I think so. Okay. What type of vehicle displays this sign? It's easy. It's like a school bus. They're kids. So I think it is a school bus. There you go. Well, that would be a good one if I was on a test. What should you check when leaving a motorway after you're driving at speed for some time? Well, these cars now, especially electric cars, difficult to sometimes see your speed. That's why the speedo is quite big. So I would say the speedometer. Make sure you check in to see what your speed is. Um, here you go. What does the white arrow on the road mean? So see the white arrow is called a deflection arrow. So it means if you are overtaking because you can on our side, broken line get back because it's about to become a solid line i should imagine or a bend so overtaking vehicles should return to the left they're actually called deflection arrows there you go and what advice should you give a pupil who asks whether it's permitted to drive on the hatch markings well if you're reading highway code hatch markings that are solid lines around them you cannot enter unless an emergency uh, broken lines mean that you should, you can drive on the hatch markings, but only if it's necessary and safe. Correct answer. I blink. You're given a driving lesson on in an unfamiliar town. Done that before. What should you tell your pupil if you see this sign? Okay, so we know that's trams. So don't drive past this sign. Nope. Follow the park and ride. Nope. Give way to trams on the right. Drive on, it doesn't apply to you. Shoot. Uh, 
it's got to be that one, isn't it? Because the, the problem is you see give way only to trams from the right, but there's no give way. You can see a tram, but it's not about give way or give way to the right. And then at the bottom there it says only, so it says don't drive past this sign, I would say, because it's only trams, I'm thinking. Oh, I hope so, if I'm right on that. Right, what should you tell your pupil if they ask what this sign means? Uh, traffic regulations enforced by camera in the area. There are viewpoint or area outstanding natural beauty. No, definitely not that one. You should turn on your speed camera detection equipment. Nope. Only roadside mobile cameras are currently in use. It's got to be this one there. Traffic regulations are enforced by camera in this area. There you go, I would say. Right, if you notice there, I'm now at 78 minutes left and I am 19 questions in. What should you advise your people to do if they see this sign? Okay, so that looks like only again, bikes and buses, certain size buses. Keep right as the left-hand lane the road is for buses and cycles. I can't see lane there though. Avoid stopping on the road ahead or parking places for provided by bus. I don't know about that one. Proceed past the sign only. Proceed past the sign as only buses and cycles are prohibited. No, because the blue sign is positive. So choose another route as the road ahead is for buses and cycles. Let's copy that. And there, there you go. As you're approaching the junction, the green light changes to amber. What should you do if you're unable to stop at the first white line? Oh, so the first white line's for cars, the second for bikes. So, um, and to amber, what should you do if you're unable to stop at the first white line? Stop at the second line in the area marked for cyclists. Proceed carefully through the junction. Stop as soon as you can and reverse back. You can come on that one. Stop just beyond the second line, keeping the junction clear. I think stop at the second line if that happens there you go you see a white diagonal line bounded by broken lines painted on the road one of their uses is to protect the traffic from turning right what other purpose do these road markers have okay uh diagonal lines bounded by broken I think it's to allow extra space for one nope to separate streams of traffic yeah i'm going to go with that one but to provide a space for emergency vehicles nope to provide space for overtaking most it's this isn't it streams of traffic you want to separate a bit more what will the new driver have to do if they cure six or more points on their license with the first two years i had this the other week a girl that passed a driving test on an intensive course and she lost her license and it's very very harsh they have to um reapply not for a full license uh retake the theory test retake both theory and practical tests and actually reapply for a license but it doesn't say that here okay but you could fall for it couldn't you reply for a full license immediately no you gotta reply for a, a provisional and then take your theory and practical tests Okay, 23, now, which vehicle should display a flashing amber light when it's being used on a dual carriageway? Okay, so on a dual carriageway, so an emergency doctor vehicle, now it's green. A non-emergency ambulance, no, don't normally have a light, do they? A mobility scooter, an off-duty fire engine, okay. So the mobility scoot is level three, they can go eight miles an hour and they are allowed on certain dual carriageways. And they can't do more than eight miles an hour, but they have the flash and amber light. That one, that, but that catches a lot of people out. Which vehicles aren't permitted on the motorway? So vehicles, tow and trailers, well, I've seen them on the motorway. Agricultural vehicles, mm, maybe, yep. Motorcycles over 125. So that's over, not under. Double decker bus is definitely on the motorway. So it's, I'm taking that one off there. It's this one, farm vehicle, agricultural vehicles, definitely not on a motorway. There you go. <laughs> You're driving down a steep hill on a two-way road. A car is parked ahead on the other side of the road. 
what should you do if a lorry coming uphill is going to arrive at the park car at the same time as you so you are driving down a steep hill on a two-way road got that a car is parked ahead on the other side of the road what should you do if a lorry is coming up the hill well isn't it lorries are big uh then they probably need takes time to pick up speed so consider slowing down and give them way because it's much harder for lorries to um start again on big hills i think i'm gonna go for that how should you signal when you're going ahead at a roundabout and taking a second exit okay well not taking the first exit so don't signal and then indicate left when you're just past the first exit yeah you get that all the time on lessons what does it mean if you see a vehicle showing a flashing green light okay easy if you know this one it's a doctor that's in the bag what should you do when you drive through roadworks on a motorway so stay close to the vehicle in front okay so stay very close to the vehicle in front use a hard shoulder speed up clear the area quickly obey the reduced speed limit it's got to be that all the time isn't it yeah so you're driving on a motorway that has chevrons painted on the carriageway in good weather at least how many chevrons well it's a two second rule so it's got to be two in it i'm guessing until you you're 70 years old how often should you renew your photo card is it every five every 10 every 15 every 20 okay either you're gonna know it or not it's every 10. Whose responsibility is it for making sure that a vehicle isn't overloaded? Okay, so the person who's loaded the vehicle, he might not even drive. The owner of the items being carried, he might not even drive, or she, he or she. The driver, what's possible? The license authority, they, they're busy doing stuff. It's always gotta be the driver. Okay, you're driving on a motorway. What does it mean if a car ahead shows its hazard warning lights for a short time? This happened because there was a, a big accident on the M40 and I think the last vehicle to hit was 17 miles away. So they changed um, some rules on the highway code and you can put on your hazard warning lights. So the driver ahead is stop it, slowing or stopping suddenly okay good and what should you uh, why should you allow extra room when you overtake a motorcyclist on a windy day well if you think about it just wind on a motorcyclist could blow them over so they may be blowing across in front of you it's possible isn't it they may have to stop suddenly not necessarily they may be traveling faster than normal nope they may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind it's going to be this one isn't it okay so you need glasses to bring your eyesight up to required standard when must you wear them well it's pointless just wearing them once it's um all times you're driving gotta be isn't it um you're driving a car what should you do before answering a call in mobile phone well, no, don't touch your mobile phone ever when you're driving or teaching you don't want to be touching that mobile phone so stopping a safe convenient place is always the best thing which lights should you use if you're on a wet motorway when there's surface spray uh, it's going to be dipped headlights doesn't say anything about visibility so it's dipped headlights what should you do if you've just been overtaken by a motorcyclist who cuts back in front of you? Flash your headlights, open the safe gap, sound the horn, maintain your speed, open the safe gate. You don't want to be aggressive or anything like that. So that one. Driving down a steep hill, why could keeping the clutch down or selecting neutral for a long time be dangerous? Well, anything with taking it out of gear or in neutral means that you have less engine braking 
so your vehicle will pick up speed your front tires will wear quickly your engine will be damaged your power steering will fail so it's pick up speed less control just like a goat cart okay so you're driving alongside a residential road what should you do if your car is reversing into the path from a driveway on the left it's always you know um So it's reversing out, so move to the opposite side of the road. That's a possibility. You sound your horn and be prepared to stop. So you'd think moving over, but that's potentially dangerous because I could carry on reversing to that side of the road. So it's got to be sound your horn, warn them, and be prepared to stop, I would say. Why should you, what should you do when you're moving off from behind a parked car? Well, you want to look around after moving off. No, not after moving off. Give a signal after moving off. Nope. Look around before you move off. That's a possibility. Use your exterior mirrors only. No. So it's got to look around before. Can you see the difference? After, after, before. It's always going to be before, isn't it? Okay. So what should you do if your vehicle pulls to one side when you're braking? Well, that means that once the brake is not working, maybe a... Uh, a caliper that seized so pump change your tires around use your parking brake at the same time consult your garage yeah you don't want to be driving that you want to get that done what should you do if you have to stop your vehicle in an emergency give an arm signal hmm? apply the parking brake and foot brake together select reverse gear keep both hands on the wheel okay so Give an arm signal, slip, reverse gear. Apply the parking brake and foot brake together. You don't really want to be doing that. Um, what should you do if you have to stop your vehicle in an emergency? It's going to be keep both hands on the wheel, Scobby. You want to turn right at Box Junction. What should you do if there's an oncoming traffic? Well, that's the time you can stop in the Box Junction as long as your exit's clear. Uh, drive into box junction when signal out. Wait in the box junction if your exit is clear. There you go. You're driving in falling snow. What should you do if your wipers aren't clear in the windscreen? Be prepared to clear the snow by hand. Set the windscreen demister to cool. Um, partly open the front windows. Use the windscreen washers. So it's be, the windscreen washers normally freeze up. So be prepared to clear snow by hand yeah gonna go for that all right when will anti-lock brakes be activated well that's when the wheels begin to skid so they release it so anything to do with when you're speeding nope. when the excessive brake pressure has been applied possible when you don't brake quickly enough nope when you haven't seen a hazard ahead no it's that okay so how can you help the environment avoid wasting fuel? It's got to be um, looking ahead, braking, late earlier, by having your vehicle properly serviced. So yeah, that's a possible one. By keeping emergency roof rack on, nope. By driving with your windows open, nope. By always using the same brand of fuel. Now it's this one. Keep it serviced. Um, when may you drive on a footpath? Okay. So it's to get into your property. Yeah, that's a big one. So overtake slow moving traffic when your pavement is very wide. If no pedestrians are near that one, isn't it? Okay, you are driving past a line of parked cars. What should you do if a ball suddenly bounces onto the road ahead? Well, continue driving same speed. Nope. Continue driving same speed. Sound your horn. Nope. Stop and move the ball onto the pavement. Nope. Slow down. Be prepared to stop. Can you see? Always pretty much that one. Slow down. Be prepared to stop. Where would parking be likely to cause an obstruction? Where the curb is raised? In a parking bay? In a lay by where the curb has been lowered? Okay, look at this. So you might look at that and go, curb raised, curb. They've done something to the curb. That's going to be it. But it's where the curb has been lowered. Wordplay, eh? Wordplay. God, no wonder so many people fail. You're about to return home from a holiday when you become ill. What should you do if a doctor prescribes the drugs that are likely to affect your driving well? Um, and we don't drive at all, really. Um, 
you are invited to a pub lunch what's the best course of action if you know that you have to drive in the evening have some milk before driving though avoid meats and yogurt before you eat a hot meal don't drink just easy just don't drink you're driving towards a left hand bend on a motor on a country road what should you anticipate yeah driving um on the road, what should be um, adverse camber, no bend, mark post, pedestrians walking the road, no white lines. So let me could be adverse camber driving towards a left hand bend. So pedestrians walking in the road, we're walking. A, uh, say that I reckon that that one definitely okay so what should you do when parking when you park downhill Okay, so some of you might have heard this before, some of you haven't. If you're pacing downhill, so you put your handbrake on, but your handbrake fails, then you want to turn your front wheels into the curb. So if the handbrake fails, then it's going to jam against the curb. So park with two wheels on the curb, nope. Park close to the bump of another car, nope. Take those two out. Turn the front wheels away from the curb. Turn the front wheels towards the curb. So away from the curb will make the car go out into the road so it's turned towards the curb um what is the main benefit of having a four-wheel drive okay so it's improved movability while parking i don't know about that improved passenger comfort nope improved fuel economy probably not to be honest with you so it's improved road holding because you've got four wheels each giving equal drive depending on the gearing of course Okay, so what should you do when you're trying to move off on snow-covered road? So slippery, so we're probably talking about a manual here. So it's use the lowest gear you can. Okay, so the lowest gear will be one, two, the low ones. Use the handbrake and footbrake together. Never a good idea if you'll see that. Use the highest gear you can. So that's three, four, five, six. So use engine high speed. So if you use a lower gear, you're more likely to get a spin of the wheel, less grip, so the highest gears possible, three, four, you know, just very gentle gas. Cool. Right, what should you do if a person is herding sheep, asks you to stop? Oh, I pretty much would stop. Stop and switch off your engine. You don't want to upset the sheep. Continue on to the side. You wouldn't ignore them. Try to get past quickly. Ignore them. If they have no authority well just stop and turn off your engine the sheep <laughs> trams can move both quietly and quickly what other features of trams should you be especially aware of so they can't steer to avoid you so that's a big possibility isn't it they don't have lights but they do have lights they don't have a horn they do have a horn they can't s stop for cars mm. <sighs> So you could easily go for that, couldn't you? They can't stop for cars, but I think it's they can't steer because they want a track, aren't they? So you're turning right on a dual carriageway. What should you do before emerging? Okay, so turning right on a dual carriageway. So check if your vehicle will fit in the gap in the central reservation. Okay, that's one. We'll keep that to the side. Position your vehicle well to the left on the side road. Mm, don't know about that. Make sure that you leave enough room for following vehicles. It's a dual carriageway. Stop and apply the handbrake and then select a lower gear. So I'm going to go check your vehicle will fit in the gap in the central reservation because if there isn't room for your vehicle, it's a small central reservation, then you've got to treat the two sides of the roads as one road. But if there is room, then you can break the road down into two halves. So I'll go with that. How can you process the process of perception be described? Okay, so perception, what you see, what's coming up towards you, 
So defining hazards as you pass them, not as you pass them, categorizing and interpreting what you see, hear and feel. So that's a possibility. The selective focus on a given hazard. So potential dealing with situations from respect. So as we pass them and in retrospect, I'm going to take out because it's what you perceive, I would say, you know, going along. So it's either this one and this way, you know, these are where people fall down. I'm going to say this one gives you your perception. Yeah, but we could be wrong on that. So we'll be coming back to that. Where should you avoid overtaking? Okay, so one way street you can overtake, can't you? On a 30 mile of the road, you could overtake, for example, milk flow, etc. Just after a bend, nope. So approaching the dip in the road. So a dip in the road is where the kind of road lowers and goes up. So that means vehicles at a higher position can't see you. So you wouldn't want to overtake there. So dip in the road. You're waiting in a side road to cross a dual carriageway. So here we go again, another one of these. What should you do if the car would safely fit in the gap with a central reservation? So we're looking for something as treat the road as two separate roads. So wait for the carriageway to be clear in both directions. Um, sorry, wait for the carriageway to be clear before driving straight across. Mm, nope. Turn left onto the first carriageway, then drive to the gap in the central reservation. So turn left onto the first carriageway. All right, feed that a second. When the first carriageway is clear, drive into the gap at the central reservation. That's the one. Block the first carriageway and wait for someone to get there. So the other one, treat it as two different roads. You are waiting to turn right onto a main road. The only vehicle in sight is approaching from the right. And with its left indicator flashing, what should you do? Well, sometimes people leave their indicators on by mistake or they're not used to the vehicle. So when should you move out? So it's after the vehicle has begun to turn. So once you know they're definitely going to turn, then you can go. What should you a driver do just before they move off with? A motorcyclist, they call it the lifesaver. So it's the look around the blind spot. Um, so but we've got to see, it's really careful how we answer these because we can gauge first gear, we can take that away because that should be done first of all with the POM routine, prepare. So then we've got observe, give a signal. So that should be done with the observation. So use mirrors, but then we've got a blind spot. So it's going to be look around, there you go. You're teaching your pupil how to reverse your car into a side road on the left. What should you teach them to do if the rear side, near side gently touches the curb? Well, what would you do in reality? I would drive forward, straight in, and then reverse. Just a little bit, a little bit of adjustment. The car's ignition light comes on during a journey. What fault does this indicate? The charging system is faulty, the oil level may be low, the battery needs charging, the engine is overheating. So the car's ignition light, it's gonna be battery. So the, the oh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? So the charging system is faulty, the battery needs charging. Oh, I'd say that, but I could be wrong here. This could be one of them ones where I lose out. What colour light shows before the flashing amber signal at a Pelican Plus install? We've got a before the flashing amber signal, so it's going to be red. When can you enter a hatched area? So it's broken, so solid in an emergency. Overtake large vehicles, possibility when necessary, and you can see it's safe to do so. Never under the new circumstances when necessary and it's safe to do so. How can you encourage your pupil to develop a good driving attitude? By letting them learn from experience. Okay. By asking them to study the instructor's manual. By imposing your will 
by allowing them to take responsibility as soon as possible. So I'd say responsibility. What should you do with a driving school L plate when the vehicle isn't being used for tuition? Well, we're allowed. Um, they can remain. We're okay. We can drive from lesson to lesson with them. What does the age, what age does category B driver entitlement normally expire? 70, I believe. Then you've got to apply for your license and go again. You're approaching a junction where the traffic lights aren't working. What should you do when a police officer gives a signal? Um, so that one's going to be stop at the line. See, stop at the level where the officer's arm. No, it's stop at the line, I would say, because you're looking at traffic lights, and where there's traffic lights, there's a stop line, so you just carry on using a stop line. There's a giveaway sign where one street joins the main road. What road marking would you see across the mouth of the junction? So double broken lines across the whole of the minor road, not all the way across, double broken lines lines across the left hand side of the road so double broken white lines across the left hand side of the minor road possible single white line across there a single broken white line across the whole width of the road that one where should you position your car to approach a um, left hand bend close to the vehicle in front in the center of your lane well to the left, close to the centre line. Where should you position your car to approach a sharp left hand bend? So, oh, this could be a dodgy one as well. I should know this. I'm going to go in the centre of your lane, but I'm going to change it here. So you should keep your distance. One meter from the curb, you're going round to the left. Ah, oh, should we change it? That could be one that we might have to come back to. Where should you position the car when you're driving in traffic lanes? Anywhere within the lane, well to the right of the lane, well to the left of the lane, in the centre of the lane. I'm going to go for the centre there. <coughs> Where are fluorescent green and yellow reflected studs used on a carriageway? So green and yellow, so green is normally a slip road, but if they're green yellowish, then it's between the edge of the carriageway and the central reservation, across the road markings where road marks start and finish, so that's a possibility at a slip road, exits and entrance. See, green, yes, but it's green stuff, it's yellow, a contraflow system. Oh, see again, this could be one where you could really lose points. So I'm going to go contra flow. But then across the road, where road, oh, let's, I'm going to go for that one. I don't know, I think that might be wrong. There are double white lines in the middle of the road. So where does, what does it mean when the line nearest to you is broken? Um, yeah, overtake. If it's broken, you can overtake. You need to reverse park between two vehicles. As a guide, what's the minimum gap you'll need between the two vehicles? So two, twice the length of the, of the rear car, one and a half times the length of your car, one and a half times the length of the front vehicle, twice the length of the car. Well, in the test, it says you've got to get it done within two um, two car lengths, but I think the minimum will be one and a half. Let's see again. What should you do before stopping to park on the side of the road? Nope, not sound your horn, flash your headlights, no, nope. select for high gear, no, nope. use your mirrors. Gotta be, isn't it? You're waiting at a level crossing. What must you do if a train had passed but the lights keep flashing? Loads of people who get this wrong, but it's um, carry on waiting. 
when must you stop on a motorway so when you're tired for a rest no when the red cross flashing lights above every lane yep when your mobile phone rings no when you have to read them out no it's got to be this one easy points there eh what should you do when driving through a contraflow system on a motorway stay close to the vehicle to be excused no ensure you don't see flurry nope keep good distance vehicle ahead possible switch the lane traffic climbing that's this one okay what should you do when driving in foggy conditions it's keep two seconds leave plenty of room plenty of time for your journey so two seconds would be enough if it's really foggy plenty of time for your journey very tiring driving in fog what should you do if a driver does something that upsets you try not to react not bothered <laughs> how should you react to a driver who appears inexperienced flash your headlights we're going to make them feel happy in it be patient prepare for them to react more slowly good possibility sound your horn overtake as soon as possible be patient you can see that's all running throughout the whole test those questions be patient prepare to stop be aware how should you drive in areas where there are traffic calming measures so um at the speed limit that's what they're after or is it at a reduced speed oh see again traffic calming measures so calming we're going to go for a reduced speed i reckon that's a little trick there what should you do if there's flashing amber lights under a school warning so that normally means that it's in operation could be a school patrol reduce your speed until it's clear in the area that's a possibility wait for the light under changes to green nope that's not that increase the speed nope keep your speed un under sandy hall now it's reduce your speed means that's probably school time it might be a timer or the um school patrol lady has a key sometimes for that or man school patrol person you're driving on a road that has a double solid white lines in the middle of the road when may you cross these lines to overtake um okay so it's it's this one you even know what you don't to pass road maintenance vehicles traveling 10 miles or less which vehicles is most likely to follow an unusual course at a roundabout? Well, it's going to be bigger, isn't it? Long vehicles. What is the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on dual carriageways? 70. Um, what colour are reflected studs between the lanes on motorways? Okay is white you're driving on the motorway what must you do if you see this signal above every line it's going to be stop and wait um you're on a hard shoulder of a motorway following a breakdown how should you rejoin the carriageway a lot of people get this wrong actually it's gain speed on the hard shoulder before moving safely onto the carriageway like a plane taking off or a slit road mm -hmm. why sh what should you do when you approach a bus signaling to move away from the bus when the highway code says let them go if possible if it's safe to do so allow them to move off if it's safe to do so i'm driving in town and want to turn left at a junction what should you do if pedestrians are crossing the junction so to turn left at a junction so sound your horn no nope, drive giving them plenty of room stop and wave them across give way to them so easy to think or a wave to them but never is it's give way you're driving on a one-way street where should you position your car to turn right a cobra test center this is a massive foul point because they always on a one-way street on driving tests give them the right the turn right and the sometimes they don't get their position right so it's in the right hand lane because nobody's going to turn into a one-way street Diamond shaped signs give instructions to drive which vehicles do you even know or you don't? It's trams. You're in a line of traffic. What action should you take if the driver behind you is following too closely? So ignore, following driver, continue to drive. Nope. Move over position to left. Nope. Signal left. Nope. 
slow down, gradually increase the gap between the vehicle in front. So if the vehicle in front brakes hard, you've got more time to slow down. You can do it more gently. You're following the vehicle on a wet road. What time gap should you leave between one in front? So you might think, oh, two seconds, but it's double that, so it's four seconds wet. Um, you're at Pelican Crossing. What does the flashing amber light mean? Well, it's very similar to the Zebra Crossing, which means you have to stop for pedestrians and give way to them. So it's give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. Nope, stop and wait for the green light. Nope, give way to pedestrians on the crossing that's the one like a zebra crossing last one who has priority at crossroads where there are no signs or road markings so you have a good one here where you learn is again all that guy or the red car or the blue car or this car but it's no one no one has to be like eye contact okay so here we go in the test let's see which ones we got wrong pass i answered 98 out of 100 questions correctly Okay, let's see which ones I got wrong. There is a giveaway sign on a one-way street joining the main road. What road markings would you see at the junction? Double broken white lines across the whole width of the mirror. There, okay, so there is a giveaway sign on the... Oh my God, because I misread it. See, see how easy this is to do? On a one-way street, on a one-way street, they go right across the top. Oh, see how easy it is? Oh my goodness. Where should you position your car on the approach the left-hand bend? Yeah, I put in the center, um, I, I was gonna go in the center lane. I, I knew it was the center lane, but I don't know why I went to the left, so. I lost two points there. I got 98, I passed, but this is how easy it is to just make judgments on the test and um, end up losing points. Remember, there's four categories and you've got to score 80% in each category. Um, so it's very easy to do really well all over all of them, but then mess up and get one of them at just under 20 percent okay guys so i really hope that helps you i know it's been a long video but at least you can follow on and see my process of working through the questions okay thank you so much for listening